Greetings. It's been four, four years ago uh, since I've made a video about the uh, ATGM systems available in SteelBeast. Um, quite a lot changed, so time to make a new version of it. Again, I used a nice open terrain map, put some missile teams on it. Uh, this time's uh, not in the winter theme setting, but uh, a nice warm summer. Then added some targets um, going around in circles so we can have some stationary and moving targets to shoot it and then place the missile teams on a nice hill where they can see all or most of the targets to show uh, there are quite a number of missile teams available now um, can uh, select them via a menu and basically see what missile types are available in SteelBeast. Also um, note that each missile team can um, then be assigned different ammunition types. For example, here the Dragon with uh, two versions, uh, three versions. Um, the latest one, the Mark III, uh, also called the Super Dragon, for example. So it's quite, an, um, quite a variation we have. And uh, for the video, I will basically uh, use um, the most powerful uh, and longest range uh, missile type for each of the systems available. Okay, so, and for honorary mention, also add the one and only playable air defense missile here. Okay, let's start with the shortest range one. Um, it's a new addition to Steel Beast, the AT7 uh, Saxhorn. Um, basically, it was designed to uh, aid in the anti tank firepower uh, for mech infantry and infantry at company or even platoon level. Simple system to uh, wheels to uh, control the launcher and uh, find track to the target. Um, dayside magnification. And you see it has quite an odd position for its uh, uh, Seclos beacon. Um, it's a wire guided missile, so it needs some a sort of marker for the missile sensor to see uh, in order to, to guide it into the, the, the aiming path. And that's uh, placed on the wing of the missile, so it gives that bumbly look when it's flying towards the target but this uh, enables a better placement of the of the missile engine so that was one of the ways to to keep engine uh, exhaust and and uh, tracking beacon apart from each other and make it easier for the tracking sensor to pick on the beacon and uh, make it easier to to guide the missile Downside of this missile is its very short range of only 1000 meters. So if you fire it at targets further out, you will quickly see that the missile drops to the ground rather quickly. Okay, yeah, I've just seen one problem. A few of the targets are not moving yet, so I give, gotta give them starting uh, commands. And T62, nice target for the next uh, missile, the Dragon. Uh, it's an older mission on steel, missile in Steel Beast, but there have been some changes in sound and appearance. So let's find one of the T's. These two stadia lines on the bottom are basically to estimate the range to the target to see if it's within range. Okay, that's an M60. Here we have one T. Uh, we see front side of the tank fits between the markers, so we can assume it's in range. Also, in the TIS system. So let's let the missile fly. You see um, the engines 
that are placed on the sides of the missile um, and keep it lifted up and steer it towards the target see these little flames on the missile body and also hear the popping sound of the engines firing um, I never heard a dragoon in real life so a dragon in real life so from second hand uh, I've been told that uh, this is a quite good characterization of the of the missiles actual sound okay now shooting at the mover see the missile moves very very slow and it's quite difficult to actually track it onto the target okay got lucky here Guide one thermal imager and simply let it splash. Also, rather short range for the missile, 1500 meters, with a quite big signature when firing, so very risky job using that missile. Okay, so. plus side for this version is uh, it's one of the quickest missiles uh, to set up and uh, put uh, tear down in the steel beast so when moving in position or getting out of the position this one is one of the fastest here in steel beast next one <laughs> to get to a range of roughly 2000 meters a system from Sweden on a yeah rather stable bi uh, tripod um, with different elevation the elevation adjustment is not really model in steel beast, so you're basically always shooting from the highest up it's the bill one from I think uh, BAE systems or was it Bofors? don't know It has a day sight uh, system and a uh, thermal imager. Checking with Wikipedia on the side. Okay, do we have a target? Ah, that's actually from Bofors, not from BAE. Okay. Target. And you see that the missile itself does not fly directly at the target, but um, roughly um, half a meter above the target and has a shaped charge that's pointing uh, downwards uh, at an angle from, from the missile's flight path. So you basically shoot over the target, um, let, the, let the missile pass over the target and the sensor in the, in the, in the fuse will detect if there's a target fire the warhead. This way you don't have to punch through the strong armor of a tank, but rather through the uh, thin roof armor and you have a much higher chance um, to to actually damage the target um, instead of firing at uh, at front or sides where the armor is significantly thicker. All right, French, German, and British co-production. Um, the Milan missile, also an older model in Steel Beast, nicely done. You see from the cooling um, battery on top that this is not a German version, but the French or British one. On the side you have one handle to change elevation. The um, azimuth is um, done by moving the whole launcher with the shoulder and, and hand. And then you have a firing button uh, for your left thumb. 
Yeah. Good optics and um, yeah, thermal imager. German thermal imager is quite loud with that Sterling engine. Okay, these four little markers in the middle are actually for range estimation. So a tank side or front that uh, fr fits into the frame or half the frame indicates that the target is in range. Yeah, like this one. Then you, okay, you wait till we'll pass the obstacle. You place that uh, lower chevron onto target so the missile will s fly up and uh, and clear the ground and then uh, go down again towards the um, line of sight to hit the target also um, thermal imaging system is not as good as uh, others of the time pretty low grade but still better than seeing nothing in the dark And here the same applies. Put the target. Let it fly out. The line of sight will automatically drop down. So you have um, the target in the crosshairs. And then guide the missile into the target. And this time we hit an ammunition bunker. Steel Beast version uh, available in 2000 and 3000 meter range. So, yeah, still a potent missile, although it's from the 70s. Okay, next one, an improve to the 87 Saxon, the 8013 Metis. On the cooling battery at the side, you see that this has a thermal imager also included in the in the system. Range increased to uh, 2,000 meters, depending on version. And it has a quite powerful t uh, warhead that kill uh, can kill um, the latest tanks available on the market. So we have, I think we have a Leopard 4 here as a target. From the side, it's a pretty sure kill. Also the thermal imager giving it a full night fight capability. And the option... Uh, through the soft launch uh, system to fire from inside buildings makes this one a very dangerous uh, missile and uh, yeah will be interesting to play um, and dangerous if um, given to your op for in the games the range. There we are. Um, 84, 85. All the missile type. Um, also, um, the same launching complex can be used for two different missiles, 84 and 85. With the 85 being the bigger missile with uh, almost double the range. Or double the range. Uh, it's also used on the BMP-2 or BRDM uh, AT uh, at, um, uh, So this version here has the AT-4 missile range up to 2500 meters When you press the trigger you actually fire the one-way battery of the system and only then the crosshairs will be illuminated Very reliable Simplified model in Steel Beast, or simplified at least in the sense that the um, 3D model of the launcher is not very, very um, detailed or high polygon count. Yeah, still the system itself, uh, yeah, fun to use, and we'll later also try. Um, the the version with the 85 missile so now let's see if we can scan for another target that's worth shooting at yeah that's within range 
let's check. Okay, all these missiles so far have been uh, SACLOS uh, wire guided. Um, so um, you need to point the aim point at the target and then the guidance systems will steer the missile to the aim line and the signals go over wire. Now we move to a different beast. Uh, range here in game 2500 meters. It's the Javelin missile. Uh, like the Dragon, it has his steady lines to estimate the range. It has a, it's quick to set up. It has a thermal imager to acquire targets. And the seeker head in front of the missile. And now we actually see through the seeker head at the target in the, in the, seeker, uh, in the seeker view. Put the brackets around the target. And actually, uh, the seeker head will then fly towards that image of the target and hit it from above. So all we can have to do now is watch till the missile hits. So apart from um, the a little bit more fiddly um, acquiring of the target, the engagement process itself is much easier because you simply fire and then the missile uh, will itself uh, seek out the target which it does pretty reliably in steel beast so again you need to pierce cooling battery for the seeker head which is a downside because it, you cannot react very quickly to a target so you need these 10-15 seconds for the missile to cool down then uh, acquire the target tell the system what pixel it should be flying towards. Simply let the missile launch. And there we go. Quick to use, and especially with the thermal imager, very good in uh, detecting targets and easy to destroy them. So now this uh, deserves a special mention. It's basically the grandfather of most of the Sackless missiles and one of the game changers in Armored Warfare. Um, still used today with uh, more modern warheads and better guidance systems. And the, uh, the first iteration were actually um, manual guidance. We needed to um, put the, uh, by, uh, the uh, uh, sight on the target and also then guide the missile flight uh, with that little joystick so very hard to use at the time steel beast models uh, sacklos missile which is much simpler than uh, than actually guiding the optic and the missile here you uh, just need to put the optic on the target and then the missile will fly towards it you still cannot engage targets closer than uh, 500 meters because the missile will have a high trajectory at the start and only come down later. Good thing is uh, you have two missiles ready at the rails, so when you miss, you can re-engage very quickly. After that, the reload time will be longer. Also, this is one of the missile systems with uh, one of the longest uh, setup times or relocation time and there we have it yeah now both rails are empty and would require a reload so we increase the range even further that's the same um, launcher that we've seen with the 84 again low polygon model um, but this version actually has the 85 with uh, four kilometers of range so we try to pick a target that's further out so you need a steady hand as the tracking time will be rather long and the target is very small at that range and I probably missed Actually, that uh, 
was a quite genius idea to have uh, two different missile types um, attachable to the same launcher system. Uh, it enables the uh, BMP-2 crews, for example, to use uh, the same launcher, uh, use their missile mounted and dismounted. Okay, so move on to the next one. This one is basically a mix between a uh, Sacklos and um, Seeker head missile. ESIM is cheating a bit by recycling the build's uh, launcher model. As well as, like, as we see here, you can fire the target and guide it manually towards the target, as I'm doing now. And other than the other uh, Sacklos missile, you don't have the missile optics, but you actually can view through the seeker head of the missile and manually guide the missile to target. Or you can fire it, use it like a fire and forget um, system. By acquiring a target. Um, it's basically the same type of seeker head as the javelin uses. And once you have uh, a target locked, you can fire and uh, forget, as they say. <coughs> okay, let's take this close one. Yeah, these two options and the option to basically disengage the target is not a valid target. Makes it very flexible and very easy to use and the range of 4000 meters i'd say that's one of the most deadly and most um, uh, versatile missiles and steel beast okay let's up the range one more um, TOW um, available in Steel Beast from the early 70s models to the uh, latest um, uh, improved TOW uh, systems. The launcher is equipped with a thermal imager and a day side. And uh, the latest version gives you a range of uh, 4500 meters. And they don't engage the target in a direct line but overfly the target and shoot um, two explosively formed projectiles at the target. Okay, and I did not hit that one. Still, you need to have a steady track and guide the target, um, uh, guide the missile to target with the optics on your launcher. Also, as you can see, um, the uh, still modeled as the with the wire guided uh, system. It's uh, the launcher and the base of the missile. As you can see the two engines of the missile firing left and right with the uh, guidance beacon and the wire in the back of the missile and the second miss. drives behind that target, I will miss for a third time. Ah, uh, great. Probably that Burning Hulk triggered the missile. Uh, okay, I demonstrated that I'm not very good at using the TO TOW. Very huge launcher, cumbersome. So the tactical mobility is not as good as with the lighter um, missile types in Steel Beast. But uh, 
yeah, the powerful Warhead and long range make up for that. But this year currently is the the champion uh, in range and actually penetration power available in Steel Beast, the AT14 or Sprigan um, Russian missile um, in Steel Beast modeled with a range of up to eight kilometers. So I put targets here at uh, yeah, roughly the seven kilometer range. You can see how long the missile is. <laughs> Till it hits, actually we'll see the um, transition between the more detailed beacon and uh, the 2D beacon at longer range <laughs> in the model here in Steel Beast. The warhead with more than uh, yeah 1,000 millimeter of uh, of penetration power is basically enough to uh, ten tandem warhead, basically enough to kill any tank model here in Steel Beast available. Uh, also equipped with a thermal imager, making it night fighting capable. Yeah, and as I said, basically the longest range is a powerful um, ATGM currently playable in Steel Bees. Let's do the second shot with the CIS. Still hard to track the target um, that is far away or in the hull down position um, at long range that's much easier with the spike but if that thing here hits it's uh, almost certainly the end of anything yeah also here you see the coolant battery for the thermal imager system Okay, and the order of the mention, uh, also guided uh, missile system, usable by the players, but uh, in this case, uh, intended for engaging air targets. The um, RBS uh, 57. Very fast missile range of up to seven kilometers uh, beam riding type you still have to manually um, track the target which is not that easy but if you hit you also bring down any air target uh, available at steel beast the more difficult part is to find it um, the missile system is not part of an air defense system, so don't uh, get any help in spotting the target and this makes it difficult to to find uh, enemy helicopters but if you do uh, you have a high chance shooting them down so let's take some time in looking at our hits starting with the saxhorn yeah you need frontal engagement are not always successful you need to hit the sides but then for uh, the early uh, tank generation it's a deadly system and definitely improves the anti armor capability of the infantry same goes for the dragon very slow and when you fire it you are well within machine gun range but if you hit certainly beats um, lighter or handheld anti-tank weapons there we have the bill yeah in this case basically killing the engine and therefore making the tank combat ineffective do we have another hit you see how the missile is uh, shooting basically from above into the target and this one straight on the turret center if it hits uh, ammunition inside the turret 
it will be pretty deadly. Yeah, the Milan, that's was barely a hit. Also immobilized only. Yeah, it's need to keep a steady tra track, and I didn't. This one looks very well. Hit right center mass. That would be the end of the tank. Yep. Yeah, they're all these uh, sackless wire guided will look rather similar. And if they hit the side or um, hull armor, they are quite, quite effective, especially in this side where I would have hit the, the driver's compartment or the ammo bunker. With a javelin coming in from above, you see the angle. It's not an overflight system, but comes down at uh, basically the missile diving down from above, hitting nicely on the turret center. And yeah, that will be also very uncomfortable for any target hit. And it's also an angle that many of the current active protection system doesn't cover right in front of the commander's hall yeah the sagger they're a hit on the centurion front This one's gonna hurt. Yeah. Actually, this missile made the IDF tankers uh, change many of the tactics. And that's why it's still so, such an, yeah, have to say, iconic weapon. AT5. Against the T90. So, yeah, the tandem warheads make it still an effective system. Yeah, I tried to hit the commander's hatch with the spike here, triggered on the opened hatch, and still would punch into the interior and definitely not good for the health of that uh, tank commander in real life see the shrapnel uh, with the shrapnel uh, depiction here in steel beast is the the white color rays are the, uh, the shrapnels with the lowest speed and red the ones with the highest speed here i hit with the oh, let me switch back the hit on the helicopter was with the was with the uh, Bofors uh, missile, the RBS RBS 57. Oh, here the TOW hits. Okay, that was too short. You see the the EPF lo landed on the ground behind the tank and basically does nothing. That's why it's back uh, scratching the paint. Here I caused some serious damage but didn't kill the vehicle. Oh yeah, and here I, the target is behind and the missile triggered on the destroyed target in front of it. Great! But 
uh, with the target nearly around it, you can see the the shrapnel generated by the um, EFP impact. And finally, the AT14 hitting in an M1 in the side. Yeah, would be unpleasant. And uh, same goes from the front. Yeah, one of the reasons why, uh, even for this uh, well protected vehicle, an a APS system makes a lot of sense. Ah, yeah, I have another obvious 5.7 hit. Nice in the under the rotor. Okay, that's it. All the new missiles and steel beasts. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.